Tonight, you mentioned the weather. Tonight, I know what I, exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go home and heat up one of those TV dinners of mine and just sit back and enjoy that. Get out of the rain tonight. I've never eaten a TV dinner. Never? Never. You never got one as a kid? My mom was a cook. My mom uh, would always cook big meals for us, nice meals. Uh, TV dinner to me, oh, just the looks of them, I, I'm disgusted. Oh, now they're all fancy and everything. I still love a TV dinner. We got them when I was a kid. You really say things like, this TV dinner is fancy, or is this a character that you're playing? I really need to know. No, they actually are upgrading the TV dinners now. Those Stouffer's are the best. You will never be in a world, Fez, that you will say this TV dinner is fancy. It just doesn't even make sense. Earl, what about you? TV dinner guy? Never. My mother always cooked, though. I mean, it was always like the last resort, let's say, if... Um, when I was old enough and my parents went away and we had the house to ourselves, it, that was like the absolute last resort if you really were hungry. But more often than not, we made something from scratch or we opened something, but never a TV dinner. Give me uh, a rundown. What kind of food you're getting, Fez? What what makes these things so great other than just being fancy? The, the Stouffer's ones are the best because you're going to get, I like the pot roast. You get the vegetables there. Everything cooks up nice with the potatoes. That's a good one. I enjoy the spaghetti. The uh, you always get a vegetable. For some reason, they heat better now, too. Where not, where your broccoli or whatever isn't getting all dried out in your vegetable compartment. Just the term vegetable compartment is the saddest, most disgusting thing I could ever hear. Why don't you order out or go out or make some food? What are you doing with compartments? I see. I think these things are just as good as ordering out. And the one, the one time I did have it, it always ends up tasting like that plastic in the compartment. It never tastes like real food to me. It just—it can't be real food. It's frozen. And then what do you do? You microwave it? Yeah. Yeah. You so it's been cooked for how long before you actually get it? Yeah, you nuke it and for about like four minutes, then you stir up like the mashed potatoes or flip over the entree or whatever, and then you nuke it for another four minutes. And the key is if you. Pick up the plastic and put actually pour a little bit of water in there. Then poke holes in the plastic. It'll be very fresh and absolutely delicious. So pour a little bit of water over it, and that'll keep in the freshness. And it, it's a great thing. It's it just breaks meal. my heart. Yeah. It literally it breaks my heart to think of you guys eating this. They have some now that have like charbroiled ch uh, chicken or something like that. It tastes like it was on a grill. Even though you're microwaving it. You will never fucking eat my food again. All the times I've grilled for you. And gone out and got nice fucking food. And this ball buster has the fucking nerve to sit there and said uh, it tastes as good as a frozen dinner. I'm completely pissed now. No, I, what I'm saying is they can give that char-grilled flavor to stuff that's frozen. It's amazing what they can do. Good. I didn't I'm, say what was better. You will not be coming over this year. <laughs> You won't be coming over for Christmas. Forget the fucking Sunday meals. It's done. No, I have to come over. It's wasted on you. And you know what they've also mastered is gravy. Because when you have Swanson's turkey dinner, they're great. And like some people, you know, we can't take an hour and a half out of our day to make some gravy. Why? We got, we what got are things, you doing, Fancy? We got things to do. We what got, do you do? You do nothing all day. You fucking let dogs lick off your balls. You, there's no reason you can't sit down and have a real meal. Don, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, buddies. Uh, I just wanted to know, uh, Fez, do you prefer the uh, brownie or the cherry cobbler dessert with those TV dinners? I prefer a brownie. And what oh, I will try yeah. to do sometimes is try to undercook the brownie part because I like it a little sloppier, a little moister, instead of like a completely hard, fully microwave brownie. So you either get Stouffer's or something new called Wasted Lives, that you sit down <laughs> and have it, eat a Wasted <laughs> Life. Me, I'm saving time, and I'm getting a nutritious, fine meal. That yeah, I have no problem with the taste or the texture, or any of it. I'm sure you don't. You you paint a beautiful uh, picture, that's for sure. They also prevent it. Uh, a nice TV dinner prevents overeating. You know, so but of course there's. Some... I actually believe it promotes undereating. <laughs> I would go out of my way to say that you'll never. It's awful, and you don't get enough. I have been known to pop another one in the microwave while I'm finishing the one that I just took out. Well, you can't do that. I wonder why your heart gave out. 
So you mean, Faz, you mean to tell me a TV dinner has the same taste and texture as someone who's taken the time and adds that little extra texture? Or goes out to a restaurant. Yeah, I mean, but they'll put that little, like, extra spice into it, that little thing that makes the meal special. You get the same deal from a TV dinner. It's I would not have, I would, yes. Convenience is a lot different, Fezzy, than you acting like it's just as good as being grilled. I would not mind if you say, look, I don't know how to cook, or I'm lazy, or sometimes I'm so depressed and I have to eat something other than a sandwich. But to sit here and act like you like it, there's no reason for us to go out to a restaurant with you. It would be wasted to buy you anything. Uh, Jeff, you're on running Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey, uh, I've been listening to Fez for a while. You know, you got the TV dinners, the social phobia, the, you know, the home, he's a homebody. He's fucking Rain Man, dude. Fucking Rain Man. That's all I got to say. You know, that is the other thing, Fez. I know you don't like to go out and eat, but you are home 21 hours a day. You could probably learn to cook and not sit there and have the Stouffer's <laughs> faked fucking grilled chicken Acting like, mmm, this gives it, this spray gives it a grilled flavoring. Anytime I've tried to cook, it's been a disaster. I have never liked one thing that I've tried to cook in my life. Plus, when you make a TV dinner, you don't have to then clean all the pots and the pans and the dishes, the forks and knives. Everything's got to be clean. So it's laziness. After cooking. No, I, I look at it as efficiency, not lazy. Uh, Jeremy, you're on a fez. Yeah. Lonnie, I'm going to side with you on uh, this. The uh, ingredient that Fez is tasting in that is liquid smoke, and it doesn't compare to real, real food. And anyone with, with a palate would know that. See, I think it's amazing that they can pull that off with their liquid smoke to add that flavor to it. That's amazing to me. Plus, I like the compartments because I have one of those things where I like to eat one thing at a time. Cock, balls, and finally asshole. See, I like the, You should try maybe one day dumping the, the TV dinner tray onto a regular plate. Then you're mixing and matching, and it's it, it might as well look like Mama cooked it. <laughs> I'm serious. Why don't you do this? What? I'm going to give you money. You pick up a couple of trays, head over Fez's house. Then the two of you sit in front of the black and white TV and watch the subway cars go by your fucking thing. I'd love like that. Like Jake and Elwood. I think TV dinner Sundays would be a great tradition that me and Fez could start. Let's do it. Start this Sunday. Head over. You watch the ball games together. Yeah. You watch. You have some TV dinners. Okay. No, I go to Ronnie's on Sunday. That door is shut to you, Fez. <laughs> no. You fucking, you destroyed our friendship with that. It's just as good as grilled. I've grilled for this fucker time and time again. Only to have him say that. Your grilling is great. I'm saying now they've added grill flavor to Stouffer's entrees. And you'll be enjoying that yeah. this Sunday. Seriously, take one Sunday with uh, Dave, this Sunday. And this will be because it's the ball game and on. And this is the, the last Sunday before your Christmas vacation starts, right? Right. Get that started. You and Dave, and I, all I want you to do is have grilled foods. Okay. I mean, the grilled fucking fake foods. All right. That sounds like fun. You want you want Stouffer's or Swanson's? Cause Swanson, or Tyson's? Because they, they make a mean microwave grilled as well. Do you have... Is there something called I'm suffering? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. Or, gee, I can't believe it tastes like uh, hepatitis. Something along that line that you can do. Uh, Dave, you're on a fez. Hey, Stinty, uh, unless you don't want to go back to the heart doctor again, those fucking microwave dinners have enough sodium. One, so one dinner has enough sodium for like three days worth of sodium. Let's face it, Dave. We, know, we now know, even if his heart gives out, how will we even be able to tell the difference, the way he lives his life? <laughs> there will be no less action in his life if he's sitting there as a corpse. And I do take some medication to handle the sodium. So I've got no problem there. He eats so much sodium that he has to take a <laughs> pill. That's his way of dealing with it. That's for my blood pressure. Uh, Jeff, you're on running Fez. I, I want to know if you guys um, retire working with the two children, Dave and Fez, because I, I can't imagine living the life that these two are living. They really do live the life of children, 
but it's chosen. It's not like they're either one of them is retarded. They've been shown the rest of the world. And I am getting to this. And I didn't even notice it till recently, but you guys have so much in common. So I much in the way head. that you live your lifestyle, so much the way you think about things. The only weird thing is that Dave dates. That fucking throws him off. If Claire didn't come back to him, you'd be the exact same person. <laughs> wow. That's not been so bad for me. I look up to Fez. I know you do. See, I don't see it. I don't see where they're that we're all that close. Is that right, mentor? Yes. Because starting Sunday, you're going to mentor him. You watch the who are the Giants playing? Oh, Giants Eagles. It's gonna be a great game. Fez, be perfect. I watch that at your house. I can't have you over anymore. You've destroyed our friendship. Do me a favor. Yes. Bring him in a, your extra uh, Giants jersey. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. You want Tiki or Shockey? <laughs> I don't want either one. I'm not putting on a Giants jersey. Uh, here's uh, Eric. Eric, you're on Run Fez. Hey, guys, what's up? Yeah. I was, I was going to say that one caller mentioned the sodium. That's one disadvantage. Another one, I don't know if you look at the fat calories and the calorie content, Fez, but a lot of times they're pretty damn high, so... Look out for those things, man. He doesn't have to worry. He takes a pill. You can, you can watch some of that stuff with your TV dinners. And, of course, there's the South Beach ones and the Lean Cuisine ones, too. Do you, you ever eat those? I've, yeah, I eat those, too. It all depends on what catches my eye on the box mm -hmm. of something, you know, that looks good. Out of uh, seven days, how many TV dinners are you eating? I would say four to five. Uh, you know how I, I seriously... I see you getting ready to cry there, Dave, and I would too. If I had any kind of sensitivity, I would cry too. I don't see why it's look. At, I want you to look at Dave's <laughs> face. He's crying for you. Why is he that upset? I don't understand why it's a bad thing. A TV because dinner. It's just the reflection of this lonely life you've picked out for yourself. You're not doing it because you like it. You're doing it because you don't know what else to do. I know your feet are going to fall off. I know you're going to start losing toes. I don't see why. Why are you crying, Dave? I mean, no, I love TV dinners just as much as Fez, but maybe Four five. five a week uh, upset me a little bit. Well, I mean, we should be going out to dinner, maybe. Maybe Ron's right. I mean, just... Maybe Ron's right. In, no, no, no. In, in saying cut down the TV dinners to maybe TV dinner Sundays. Or... May <laughs> For the special day of the week? Yeah. Sunday? Yeah. You didn't know he was eating that many, huh? No, I thought, I mean, at the max, I'll do is two a week. Because I do cook. And you're better than me. <laughs> He's no, three I'm... days better than you. <laughs> I hate to tell you. I don't know. I disagree. Do you ever make yourself like a nice burger or anything? No. See, because if you get a Foreman grill, there's just as simple as a TV dinner. You, you can literally put a frozen burger in your Foreman grill and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to flip or anything like that. Ten minutes later. That would be real meat. That's the problem he has. He's like a vegetarian where he doesn't eat real meat. He just... You know what to do, Fez? I'm going to blindfold you. Right. I'm going to have the TV dinner. I'm going to give you a spoonful of either that or the cardboard box that came in. And I guarantee you, you're not going to be able to tell me the difference. I would totally be able to tell. Give me your top five favorite TV dinners. Let's count them down. Okay. I like the Stouffer's uh, Pot Roast. Is that number one or number five? That's number uh, That's number five. Number five. Okay. Number five, Stouffer's Pot Roast. All right. Number four is the Stouffer's Barbecued Chicken with potatoes. I'm a little furious over that one. I'll let it go. Uh, no, I'm not going to let it go. It just it infuriates me that you compared that to mine. All right, three. Number three is the Boston Market meatloaf with macaroni and cheese. Yeah, and yeah, you put a little apple. Sometimes it comes with a little bit of applesauce on the side, so you can dip your macaroni and cheese in it. Oh God, so tasty. Number two is the Hungry Man Turkey Dinner. I enjoy that one. And the number one is, I'm not sure if I'm saying this lady's name right, the Marie Collin TV dinners, those frozen dinners. And with that one, it's uh, it's also the turkey. But hers is really, really good, too. I concur with all of those. 
Yeah. It's the saddest I'm thing I'm surprised ever. you didn't have Swanson's in there. You really should try that out. Maybe I'll bring those over for TV dinner. Swanson Sunday. seems a little cheap for me. He named like four different... I couldn't name one brand. He named four I had no one. idea there were different brands. I just thought they came in yellow packets. <laughs> I just thought it was a TV dinner, like the generic... Now, where do you, you find them in the depressed uh, section of your grocer's freezer? No, they're right there in the front row for everyone to see. Can I say, I don't see what the stigma is, because plenty of people make uh, homemade pizza. Like, they'll, they'll buy Elio's boxed pizza, and they put yep. it in the oven. It's the same pr principle. <clears throat> this is like a food version of depression. It's a guy who's cut himself off from the world, who is lonely, who is afraid, and sitting there eating tasteless food. You've... Do you feel bad about it? I'd rather hear, oh, I'm going into my apartment at night and I'm shooting up heroin. And you think I'm joking, but I'm fucking telling the truth. Because at least if you went home and shooting, uh, were shooting up heroin, you would be aiming towards feeling better. You would be going towards pleasure, not just apathy. See, I don't see how it's any different than just having a sandwich for dinner or ordering something from a diner or a restaurant. I, uh, to me, How about you go out and have a meal with friends, you order some nice fucking food, you learn to cook, maybe you meet people, maybe you start dating, and I don't care which sex, I know fucking gay guys, they seem to get along great, they go looking, I don't know what they're looking at, like uh, antiques or shit like that, you take weekends in the country. I never realized these dinners were so depressing. Yeah, they are. They're depressing. I've always enjoyed them. I always had them as a, as a kid. My mom always gave us TV dinners. We get those kids meals or whatever. Seriously, now I'm going to cry. Don't make me fucking cry. Can I ask if you have a special TV dinner table that you set up on your chair in front like, of the TV? Like literally I, a TV tray? Yeah. yeah. That's, I, I have a, 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 my own little table just for the TV dinners. Yeah, I have a TV tray. Aluminum? Yeah. Oh, my God. What's wrong with that? You have to put it on something. Fezzi, would you please try dating? Please. That's going to get me out of TV dinner? Yes. You're going to become a person. Fez, the next stage is cats. You know, having a relationship with cats. I, here's the weird thing. His, he doesn't own a cat, and yet his apartment smells like cats. I didn't even know it was possible. I don't know where that's coming from, that odor. I could really start fucking crying when I th hear about this. Stone, you're in Uh, yeah, Ron, how many of those meals were turkey, like three or four? A lot of turkey in his C life. A couple turkeys, it's but I really like the Marie Collender, and I like the uh, Hungry Man, too. He's trying to commit... Tryptophan suicide. He's trying to slip into a turkey coma. He does hope to sleep after each one of these things. I usually nod off. I'll admit, I'm, uh, I'm eating them in my bathrobe. While you're watching Jeopardy. At least the first round where you could get some of them. Then what do you watch? You entertainment tonight? Yeah, I watch some of that. What kind of... What, what do you uh, watch, like, let's say, 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock? What's your life like? Like, 5 to 8... Five o'clock, I usually turn on some news, like CNN or MSNBC, something like that. And you're probably yelling back at that. Probably that's when you start dropping your end bombs. Um, I'll watch some Seinfelds in there, too. Uh, stuff you already know. Yeah. Some kind of comfort. Exactly. I love it when there's a Seinfeld that I love come on. Sure, it's like a bedtime story for adults. Seven o'clock, I will watch the Read Jeopardy. Read me the train story, Mommy. Read me the train story. Oh, Fancy, I've read it to you so many more times now. Read me again. Show me Seinfeld, Mr. TV. Show me Seinfeld. <laughs> when you watch Seinfeld and you're sitting there and you're seeing a guy who's living in New York and he's having friends and they're going places and people are visiting and he's visiting, do you ever think I could reach out and accomplish this rather than just watch it on TV? You know, that thought never actually occurred to me watching Seinfeld. Think about it. If Seinfeld had your life, it'd be fucking canceled by the, the end of the first episode. It would be too sad. So I hit a Jeopardy at 7, and then uh, another Seinfeld at 7.30. <laughs> so 
sad. I find comfort in the repetition. Comfort is not what you want out of this world, brother. You want some experience. But they are soothing. A nice TV dinner is soothing. It comes out just the right temperature and everything. Morphine is soothing. But if someone spent a lifetime doing morphine, their friends would be over trying to send them into rehab. You need fucking baby rehab so you can grow up. You need to be thrown into some kind of adult boot camp. How about drink? <laughs> Go out in bars and drink and talk to people. Do you drink alone at night? Mm, uh, every now and then. But very I was you, I'd never stop. I would never stop drinking. And then I'd occasionally just be yelling this. How did this happen? How did this happen to me? See, the way I see it is I finally got it all set up nicely. Just I'm in your little box, eating your box food, looking at your box on the TV <laughs> box. It's so sad. And, and I could say this as someone who is a total loner now. It's like, Fez, that's, that's very, very scary. You're this. at least out in the streets. Yeah, I'll go out. I'll make it a point to go out. I'll go to... I will go to a museum. I'll I'll actually go online. It's like, okay, what's happening around the city? What's what's a place I always wanted to see in New York? I'll at least do things. I'm going to tell you this, Fez. I think you owe an apology to ADF. For what? See, ADF is one of the reasons why I don't like to go out. No, I don't think so. I think that now, after hearing this story, I got a feeling that maybe he was dead on. No. He wasn't disheveled. I did not ADF. You didn't see him. I know, but I see him enough to know he probably wasn't disheveled. But you didn't see him when nobody was around. I'm sure he was fucking pathetic. ADF posted on runfez.net that I looked homeless when he saw me out a couple Saturdays ago. He said you were muttering? Yeah, that's what he was telling people at a party he went to later on that night. And Sheep, he also said it. I did not look homeless. But I don't like to go out, and then when people point out, oh, look, he's out and he looks weird, that's what gets to me. Hmm. So you just stay home with your frozen turkey <laughs> and your little box till you nuke it. Where I'm comfortable. And he's just sitting there, just in the glow of that pathetic TV set going, by a vow, by a vow. So sad. It didn't seem all that sad to me. I am going to get you one of those pal talk cameras just so I can have Dave keep an eye on you in case you fall and break a hip. I would love to do that. We could talk to one another, show what we're wearing to bed that night. Show They're... each other your balls? No, I meant like pajamas wise. Y you get pal talk, you're expected to get naked. Anthony, you're on Run a Fez. Yeah, uh, I think I got a solution for Fezzy. I think rather than pal talk with Dave, why don't you just move in? It'll be like a wacky sitcom. Fezzy, it's really not a bad idea. You move in with Dave and Claire. And Claire? Well, she's staying with Dave most of the time. They share a room. And then that way they take care of you. And I'm you fucking think I'm kidding? I'm really not. It's either that or you start dating. Well, I can't, I just, I don't want to live with somebody. I'm too comfortable now going about my own business in that apartment to have someone else tripping up everything. Speaking, talking, <laughs> interacting. Yeah, why start living? If you moved in, my mom, I'm sure, would buy us a convertible chair. So You want you, that? You could sleep on that, you know. He's going to get his own bedroom. I have a no. bed and a bedroom. Oh, I thought he was going to move into my apartment. No. How could I move in there? With the convertible chair. Why don't you guys move out and get a three-bedroom between the two of you? Oh, that would be awesome. And you live in Manhattan. You get off the island, finally, Fez. Your comfortable island. Come on. That would be great. We'll get uh, anywhere you want to go. You want to go to Grange Village? Me and Claire will we'll go there. Anywhere you want. You're going to be paying all the rent, or the lion's share of the rent, Fezzy. Exactly. I can see that coming. No, that's that's going to be the problem. I can afford about 800 And you guys are always going to be there. I just Fucking. know it. <laughs> You'll hear all those grunts coming out of the other room. Oh, on Friday night, yeah. <laughs> yeah Dave Hammer. You better go out on Friday night, baby. <laughs> Hearing uh, someone yell the big cheese. Um, Brad, you're on Run Fez. 
Yeah, I was just wondering if I heard Dave say that he dips mac and cheese in applesauce. That's yeah. got to be a sign of retardation right there. He's Davy Mac and Cheese is what they call him. Always. we got to find somebody for Fez to do lonely people with. Who out there is as lonely as Fez? Who's somebody that would be perfect for you? Well, look who it is. Hi. Stalker Patty. Come on in, Patty. Hello. Stalker Patty. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Patty, how, how are, are you, honey? I'm fine. How are you? Happy uh, holidays. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, I read all yeah. about it on the message board. <laughs> yeah, I always believe everything you read. Hey, uh, Patty. Uh, you got your own apartment, right? Yeah, I have an SRO. What's that? Stand it's room like only? a single room occupancy with my uh, own bathroom and everything, so I'm cozy. Nice and cozy there. Yeah. Fezzy's a lonely guy. Mm-hmm. Any way that you would think that you and Fez would move in together? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we both like our own space, right? Yeah. I agree, Stalker Patty. <laughs> You know, Good. I can't hear through these earphones. Well, I want to get Dave to help you out here. <laughs> and he'll come in and uh, fix that for you instead of just sitting back there being stupid. <laughs> Fezzy, when you when you look at Patty, exciting life to you? No, not really. Do you feel like it's a reflectional, like you guys have a lot in common? No, I don't see where we have anything in common. I don't hear. Because she has a cat? At least she has somebody oh. to care for. Yeah, I have that. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Fez should get a cat? I think you should get a pet of some kind, right. but a pet that you like. You might be a dog person instead. Fezzy, you I know, know? O and A, and God bless them for doing this. I mean, uh, I mean, a lot of times people will write or say this with the, you know, about Opie and Anthony, but hearts of gold. They're taking Fez out shopping this Saturday, and they're going to get you completely new clothes. A nice makeover. That is not me going with... God what? bless you, <laughs> ONA. Wait a minute. God bless everything You're that you do. You're going on a homeless shopping spree? First things first, get shoes. I am not going on a homeless <laughs> shopping spree with Andrew and half a Hulk face and everybody else in the Why gang. Not? Because I'm not homeless. I don't qualify. You think you should go? Well, me? You do. Oh, you, I'm not homeless no, either. No, I mean Fez. Uh, you do need a makeover, Fez. <laughs> you could go to hang out, maybe. <laughs> you know. Yeah, what's wrong with that? You're hanging out. Because then I'm going to be stuck in a mall where I don't know where I'm at and I'm going to want to be home. <laughs> what do you mean you don't uh, know where you're at in a mall? <laughs> you're afraid of being lost? Yeah, I don't, I don't know where the mall is at that they're using this time. You're going to ride along. Dave will take you. Yeah. Pick up Granny. Would you take him to the mall? Absolutely. Yeah. Aww. I got Claire's car that I can drive you with. And I think I do know where the mall is. I'm not going to uh, give it away, though. Oh, is it a secret mall? Yeah. They don't want anybody there? I Currently. thought Opie announced it yesterday. I I'm didn't not... hear the name of the mall, so I have no idea. Don't go yelling it out, Fez. Okay. <laughs> but I don't think it. they're going to tell on the radio until Friday. Yeah. You know. And I don't want... Anybody there, you know, before Fez, I want you to get your clothes first. <laughs> I am not going to try to push myself to the front of the line of the homeless shopping spree. <laughs> Why not? You need stuff. I am fine. I've got everything I need in my Roosevelt Island apartment. Oh, God. <laughs> Why don't you head out with ha- half a hawk face and the two of you try to meet people? Aww. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I don't think he's exactly the bait you want to use when you're meeting new people. What's the bait? Why don't you throw that wall of yours out there? People would love to meet that. <laughs> I'm sure you can make friends. If I had it, I would. Save him for a rainy day. It's raining now. I'm going to get you on J-Date. What's J-Date? Just for nice people you meet, people like yourself. J-Date, isn't that Jewish? Should I put you... Well, what do you want? End date? I don't think so. What do you want here? Uh, same sex? Don't fill out my profile. I don't want to go on J-date. Log off. Log off. <laughs> before they charge me. <laughs> Get you up there. <laughs> don't. Do not fill out a profile for me. I'm going to use your picture from 1983. <laughs> I am not using anything recent. I'm going to use the old black and white picture that I got of you. That one has a mullet. Shot from far away. So what? It looks great. 
You had healthy hair in those days. At that point, yeah. Still had some bounce to it. Uh, Mike, Mike, you're on Run Fez. Hey, Ron, how you doing? Good. Hey, uh, yeah, I was one, I have a brother. He's the same way as Fez. And, Maybe you like to go out with Fez. Under. Well, no, I, my brother's cool, don't get me wrong. Right. It's a, he's a, they're control freaks. He has to, in his apartment, he can maintain control of all situations surrounding him. Going out in public, like my brother, freak, you have to freak him out because he's not in control of what's going on. People freak him out. I say, is that what you think, too, Fez? Yeah, I'm not pathetic. I just like to have the control of my apartment. Why don't you do this, just so we know you're not lonely? Why don't you and Patty go out one night and just put the tip of it in? Put the tip of it in <laughs> and just to get it done for both of you. What do you think, Patty? I hope that means just going out to a restaurant or something social, you know? Fezzy? No, I'm not putting my tip in it. What about just against it? You just put it against it. I know it's finally quaffed after today's O and A show, but still. What if you do the old hot dog and a bun thing? What's that? Well you just lay it again it doesn't go in but just separates. <laughs> Just to get some friction going. <laughs> Why is just somebody so obsessed with me having sex? I'm more into Fez. I'm just using you as the I'll... trollop. Uh... <laughs> That's not where I want to get any friction. Thank you very much. I appreciate the sentiment. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. I just want you to try it. This would be like an exhibition game for both of you. Nothing counts. <laughs> scrimmage, if you will. <laughs> Sexual scrimmage. <laughs> I don't want to be shirts or skins there. What, you want her to use a strap on? No, I don't want her to use a strap on. Jelly up with some butt lube and then uh, come at you from behind with a strap on. See, I'm losing control here. I don't think you uh, are. I really don't. All right, hold on. I got a call from the future. JD, you're on running Fez. I'm calling with a telephone call from the future. Yeah. Uh, former radio personality Fez Marie Watley was found dead in his apartment today. When his mailman noticed that no mail had been collected for two years, Fred Watley was found dead sitting in front of his air conditioning with a Swanson turkey meal. <laughs> it's going to be real sad. Are you? A, do you eat frozen food too, like this? I don't like them. Yeah. But they don't really fill you up, and I don't like the quality of the food. I make my own oh. soup from scratch because I don't like cans, and I have salads. I live on vegetables, especially the frozen kind like edamame, soybeans. It's a, so a health sad person. to hear that you, you're living a more productive life than Fez. I and don't think so. There's never a party, an ONA party you're not at. And everybody's glad to see you. I enjoy myself. I like to get together with other people. Fezzy, she's too fast for you. You will not be able to keep up with Patty. I uh, to me to hang out with people at parties is a, is a little bit more effort. It takes some work on my part. It's uh, uh, yes. What's wrong with working a little bit instead of sitting there talking to the box of frozen turkeys? <laughs> I just go with the flow. I'm shy when I go out, but I go with the flow. I sit down, I eat with them, I talk, you know. But that's wonderful. You, know. you seem real shy. She is a little shy in the crowd. I've seen her around before. Yeah, I'm but everybody's quiet. then she'll find somebody in the corner and then talk to her and you know, once you sit down with her one on one, she'll talk your ear off. But she's not going to be holding court. She gets over the shyness very quickly. Are you coming to the Ronfez.net Christmas party this Saturday? Yes, I am. I'm in the grab bag, the Secret Santa, too. Really? Yeah. I didn't know what There's about to eleven, twelve of us participating, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. And that's kind of your Christmas. Yeah, I have fun with that. I uh, love that. We're doing it at work, too. I, I'm starting to cry a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to get rid of it. Fezzy, why don't you join this year? Secret Santa. I'm not going to get no Secret Santa. I know what I'm getting you. <laughs> What's that? Banana butt lube. Don't get me banana <laughs> butt lube. You can get him a Mango? gift no. certificate to Swanson. Whoa! And get all the face, face, face. That's not a face. <laughs> you know what I love about it? 
You are you're a place for uh, people from 0 and 8 to actually get a win. <laughs> <laughs> when they get out of that conference, they pick up an easy win here. Who'd you get for Secret Santa? Okay. Uh, I, I don't think we're supposed to say. It's supposed to be a surprise until uh, you get there. Uh, then, you know, you get to... Do you know some of the other names in there? Uh, I don't know the person that I was given, but... You know, I bought something cute for the person. That's very nice. You know. And you do it at work, too? Yeah, we did it at work. Everyone getting Starbucks mugs? No. <laughs> just all being exchanged back and no, forth? just little presents. Bah humbug. I, went to bah the humbug. M- I went to the M&M store for that present. Nice. Yeah, I like the M&M store. Sure. Uh, Scott, Scott, you're running Fez. Yeah, I've been listening to Fez's pathetic story, and I, I think I have a solution of a guy you should hang out with. And that's Big A. Big A. Big A. You used to date him, right, Patty? No, we were, we're friends. Right. Yeah. Scrimmage? Sexual scrimmage? No. No. Would you ever do this with Fez? What? Just uh, S to S? <laughs> <laughs> no, not dating him, for goodness sakes. But if no. you wanted to. Don't you have one of those two-headed ones, uh, Fez? You guys could use what's on a quick... A, what's that? Oh, and Fez has these dildos, I guess. <laughs> that, uh, Ron! The two-headed, and that way he can get ass-to-ass. And then, uh, I guess you just pound them backwards. Have, I, I don't mind bringing up my TV dinners. Let's not go through all the house. I didn't know they did things like that. Yeah, they I've do. I've never seen anything like that. Well, what do you mean, they? Thanks. Uh, the professor, you're on run of Fez. Hey, fellas. Yeah. You know, I, I'm been listening to, to Fezzy, and Fezzy, I love you, but I'm really concerned, uh, sincerely here, as a professor of psychology and neuroscience, that you are, a, like, a day away from agoraphobia, like, not leaving your house at all. This ADF prick, I'm afraid he's made it worse, uh, you know, by thinking maybe it was a gimmick rather than a shoot, man. You, I'm really nervous about it, that you might just stay in your house and eat, and eat turkey dinners and never leave. I think if it wasn't for Ronnie and the show, it, it'd be all done. And you live in the best city in the world for food. You know, I'm stuck here in Evansville, Indiana. Sure, I can eat turkey frozen dinners. You have every restaurant in the world you could go to, and you don't you don't want to do it. It makes me really nervous, my friend. All right, thanks. Thanks, buddy. Right, that's coming from a professor, Fess. Well, I'll, I'll agree with the professor on this point. Yeah, ADF, I'm sure, made it worse. Yeah, but I you, think we point all the blame right there. You think you could end up in agoraphobic? I could see that possibly happening. I could, I could see that, yeah. Do you think it's the show that's keeping you somewhat connected to reality, or... Is that to blame? Is this considered a hassle for you to come in here? No, the show's not a hassle. No, I don't think it's to blame for any agoraphobia. I know that Fez has this very weird thing, too, that I didn't realize for a while, but he will not leave here until after I'm gone. He does not like the idea that I stay at work longer than him. <laughs> I, with that one, I have a thing. Well, I like to be around you. I feel safer that way. Because mm, I'll kill. <laughs> yeah. You know I'll kill whoever, whatever. <laughs> okay, and that way Ronald just killed them. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, I hate to think that I'm missing something, too. Like something's happening. Right, yeah. Well, yesterday, I went, after I left here, walked around the block, came back up, and had a little party with Earl and uh, Dave. Yeah. Why? But do you mean like you're afraid work stuff will start happening? Like we'll start talking about, hey, why do we need Fez anyway? <laughs> I don't know. I th- it's work stuff. I don't know if it's that direction. <laughs> do you really think we need Fez in here? <laughs> Good point, Earl. <laughs> <laughs> do not bring that up at any meeting I miss. Let's make a list of who could replace Fez. Uh, bowl of gravy. <laughs> uh, jello mold. Rude, rude. <laughs> No, but is that what do you worry about? What could you possibly be missing? Um, like if something comes up, like for the next day or something that I'm just not aware about, and I'm just don't have any clue. So you get here, and everyone's wearing sombreros. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> oh man, you know, I'm like, what's with the sombreros? Why? Why are you doing that? Oh, you know how we're doing sombreros now. Sombrero day, What? You miss? You miss sombrero day? When was this decided? So I could I could make some decision with the boys, and you're not here. That's what you worry about, right? Yeah, and I and I wouldn't be in on it, and I wouldn't know about it, and the Dave and Earl wouldn't tell me about it, right? So is there days that you go, God, I wish Ron would leave so I could go home? Um, those are very few, but yeah, there's some days like that. Why don't you just? <laughs> Holy shit! You make it like communication. So, you know, days where I don't feel good or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> What's that, uh, Patty? You make it seem like communication's a problem. Everybody oh, oh true. Hey, I don't even Patty. know what that you'll, means. You'll never not be in on anything. Right. <laughs> That's it is a little paranoid. <laughs> it's a little paranoid, and it's probably... I know at some point you probably think people talk behind your back, right? Oh, I is just that, assume, yeah. Is that your worst feeling if people do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that goes back to the ADF thing. To, well, long before that, but right. I mean, just as a more current example, you know, I had a whole party a couple Saturdays, Saturdays ago talking behind my back. And that hurts, right? Yeah. Okay. See, I know it happens, so when it gets confirmed that it happens, yeah. oh, that's just concrete there. <laughs> but you wouldn't, didn't, wouldn't think that Ron would talk behind your back, so... Not in a bad way. Right. But if something, if I just go going, going uh, what do you guys think of Fez? You're not there to go, he's great! <laughs> <laughs> Love him! <laughs> but you th even if, if we were saying good things, you wouldn't like it. Right, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Not nice to talk behind people's backs, though, like that in a yeah. negative way. Well, people talk about each other all the time. I mean, it's not necessarily talking about someone behind someone's back. If you, I agree. People are constantly talking. <laughs> I totally agree with that statement. And you, and that worries you. Yes. Yes, it totally does. Now here, just so we know, to get back into this, right? This is the only time I've seen you in like a year. Really involved with the show is when it's about <laughs> you. Anything else, you're haphazard. You may be involved. You may not be involved. If we could get you to have this passion about stuff that aren't you, I think that you'd feel great then. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with that. Well, the, the, Dave brought it up to me last night. If, what? Yeah. When? At the bowling. <laughs> what bowling? Uh, <clears throat> you guys went bowling? It's a three-man league. Well, we had to get a fourth, but... Yeah, you always have to. Yeah. You could have asked me. Maybe I would have wanted to do that. Yeah. We didn't know. But the other guy's a really good bowler. You wouldn't want to bowl. Yeah. The balls are too heavy. I can yeah. bowl. No. You, you need to be at home resting. I'm not going to pop a stent bowling. But anyway, the point is this, Fez. I want you to work on this. You leave in here before me. Oh, I couldn't. Doesn't have, <laughs> doesn't no, have no. to happen today, but at some point in the future, you're like, all right, guys, I'm going to take off now. Because normally, how long does he leave after I leave? Uh, three to five minutes. Oh, now, bullshit. <laughs> I never knew this until once I got downstairs, and I'm like, I call up, uh, and I go, uh, uh, Dave, uh, tell Fez. He goes, Fez already left. I go... <laughs> He left? And then he's like, yeah, he always does. <laughs> he goes what like this. rat. You want to know this? Five minutes after you leave, he's gone every night. And he's cracking up. And people <laughs> wonder why I'm paranoid. See, the talking exists. Well, it all really happens. I know how to solve the problem. Yeah. Leave <laughs> the same time. Oh, boom. Oh, that's and just nobody brilliant, has Patty. to think anything of anybody. Face, Ooh. face, face. <laughs> you want to do that? That would be better, I guess. But I'll, I'll give you two examples. Like yeah. the, the other day, I had to go make a phone call yeah. while you guys were still in here. I didn't want to leave the room to go make the phone call because I thought something was going to come up. But here's the thing. You are the one who'll go, I have to make a phone call. And everybody knew it was about business, but you're like, I don't want Earl and Dave to hear it. And then other times you'd be like, could you guys leave while I talk to Ron? Even though <laughs> it has to do with all of us. Right. Then I like to do it the other way. <laughs> right. I don't like it on me. I like doing it to other people. People do this a lot of times. <laughs> uh, could you guys give Ron and I a second? No, walk out and he'll go like this. I don't like Dave and Earl. <laughs> and I go, I know you don't, buddy. What else? But here's what you need to do to go back, Fuzzy, to go back to your other little fear that people are talking about you. Leave before me sometimes. Leave after me sometimes. Leave the same time as me sometimes. Don't think, I need Ron to leave before I can leave. Yeah, to me, that's like leaving dirty dishes in the sink. I'm dirty dishes, you fuck. No. I'm <laughs> dirty dishes that need to be washed. <laughs> this is the second time I got offended today. You shouldn't. 
maybe just leave when you feel like going. I mean, that it, was kind of my point. If it's after run, then it's after run. But if if like if, if, if you're it's sick, before, yeah, it's if before. You're, if you're tired, not feeling well, you have every right to go home early. But you know, at a certain time, we have like a little post show meeting. But then when that's over, you can tell it never like this meeting is adjourned. Right. But it turns into. You know, Dave uh, screaming, all right, I'm going to give you the seven be bass players of all time. <laughs> you know by the time we're at that point, I'll just end up wandering away. I'll just, right. I normally live with, I can't hear this anymore. <laughs> I hate you people. And I'm, not, I'm not getting paid to listen to this. Wow, it's also true. Yeah. I, I think those discussions are fun. But, yeah, I mean, you definitely don't need to be a part of them. No, I don't need to hear you talk at all. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I mean... It's just stupid. Okay. And I'm going to say that. I'm not going to say that behind your back. Yeah. I'm going to say it to you. I told you today. A little bit of stupidity, nice. I'm, you know, it's yeah. flavoring for the show. Okay. But it cannot overpower the show. I'm not trying to. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Sometimes my ideas aren't uh, executed Re They're well. just retarded. Yeah. You told us before, your brain stopped for half an hour when you were a kid. Yeah. 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Oh, now it's fucking dropping down. No, so it's never be, dropping down. So, uh, it didn't happen at all, and there's no reason for this. Well, you told me it was the ocean. Your brother said it was a pond. It's a big difference. I said it was on, on in the bay. Hmm. Uh, Gail, you're on Run Fez. Hey, guys. Hey, Patty. 10841 checking in. How are you? I'm doing good. I got a suggestion for Fez for a pet. Yeah. A hamster. See ya. He's got one tucked already. <laughs> Nothing smells like a hamster. Like shit? Not I if don't, you keep hamster the cage shit. Clean. Gay shit, probably. <laughs> Not if you keep the cage adequately clean and you <laughs> clean it every two days, which is what you're supposed to do. I can't tell which of you are talking. You or Fez. That's you, Patty. You both t worry and talk about the same things. You want to do that? Keep it adequately. Uh, you want a pet, Fez? No, I do not want a pet. I always. You want a pig rat? One of those little pigs that look like a rat? <laughs> oh, no. That would freak me out. Tracy's uh, brother has one. Fucking filthy. And yet, no. anytime I see it, it reminds me of ham. You ever see they have those little, uh, those uh, their little hooves almost make their feet go up, and they look like they're cocktail wa waitresses. <laughs> they're just walking around... <laughs> No, I always say, I don't want a pet. Um, some of my nightmares that I have, a reoccurring nightmare, is that I've killed a pet. And I, whether it's a dog or a rabbit or a cat or something, yeah. like I've, in the dream, I've neglected it so much that all of a sudden it dawns on me, oh, I was supposed to go feed that pet. And all I right. go and it's dead. All right, so what did Carl Jung say about dreams? We are everything and everybody in our dreams, right? Right. So that pet would be part of you that you were neglecting the part of you that doesn't want to sit there in front of rerun TVs eating frozen TV dinners and missing out on life even though you happen to live in what most people call the most exciting city in the world you are living like you live in no offense here fucking Peoria everyone in Peoria just went hey <laughs> why us out of everywhere I couldn't think of any more duller yeah. Is that's what's being killed? I can see that. I just thought it was worrying about any sort of responsibilities. Maybe the dream is is giving you a suggestion, and that suggestion would be kill off the obedient side of you because pets are usually are, are obedient. So maybe, in other words, it's like when you leave after run in in a weird subconscious way, you could be being obedient to him in some strange thing. Maybe <laughs> maybe kill, you're the pig rat. Right. Well, no. Uh, yeah. I am not a pig rat. <laughs> But maybe just kill that part off and just say, I'm a man of my own destiny. Do you feel like you're a pet here? Like mm. the show pet? Would you make a great pet? No, I don't feel like a pet here. Hmm. No, why would I feel like that? Oh, you know how I always have you eat out of a bowl. Does that bother you? <laughs> the thought of it does. Would you want me to give you like a little pillow in the corner? No, because I'm a person. I'm a human. I'm named Fez. Fez isn't even a human's name. It's a pet's name. You would make a great pet. I'm nobody's pet. 
pet of the month, Fez Watley. <laughs> He's very clean. <clears throat> he is. He licks himself. And potty trained, despite what ADF says. ADF said I shit myself. <laughs> All right, you're coming to this party uh, Saturday night, Fez? Yeah, I'm going to be there. Why don't you do this? Bring a date. Fez on a date. Who would I bring? I guess a guy. <clears throat> oh, you and Dave can go together. Dave can be a date. <laughs> would you like Patty to be your date? I'll just meet Patty there and say hello to her. At her house? No. <laughs> At Calico Jack's when we get there. You want me to call my brother? You my, want to? My schnip schnip brother. What's schnip schnip mean? Circumcised? So you're looking for somebody maybe a little younger than his brother? What about Sheepy? I can't imagine walking into a party with Sheepy on my arm. Hmm. What about Irish Alki? <laughs> Too drunk. So you need a sober guy. And Irish Alki's already spoken for. What about that guy Big Jim used to like you? Big Jim liked me? I think so. How about Earl? Not so much you, but he liked guys like you. <laughs> but he dates. He goes on. He meets people. I think I'll probably just show up at Calico Jacks myself. You know I'd like to see Fez date? Tim Gunn. Tim Gunn would be perfect for him. Tim Gunn from Project Runway. He's holding out for the next season. They don't think he'll be back on Bravo. Would you want to go out with a chick? I just well, I just want to go out myself. We can call an escort agency. I mean, you want to go out with a black whore? Don't have to <laughs> beg her. It's going to be a little obvious walking into the RonFez.net party. I will just call her your long-term <laughs> girlfriend, even though we all know differently. I don't know, Fez. You're very difficult to try and fix. Yeah, because I resist repairs. Why don't you do this? Could you do this? Could you leave now? Leave now and say, I'm going to take the rest of the show off. No, I couldn't do that. And the rest of us will be just here talking behind your back about <laughs> you and going over things and, and taking calls. No, I wouldn't be able to do that. What if... Even if I could hear, you know, if I've turned on my MiFi and, um, and start listening to it, I'd still feel bad about it. How about, like, Baby Steps? What if he at least left the studio for, like, a couple minutes? You want to do that? I mean, maybe that would just help you Baby Steps, you know. Why don't you walk down to the bathroom and just see how long you can do it? No, let me just stay here. Walk down to the bathroom. All right. I'm going to be right back. Okay. How are you feeling so far, scale 1 to 10? Like, everyone's going to start talking about me the minute I'm out the door. Uh, uh, I'll let you know if anybody talks about Good you. one. Thank okay. you, Patty. You take names. While I leave the room. <laughs> Dan, you're in my okay. face. <laughs> hey, I miss human fez. Uh, I think his problem stems back to his childhood when he was forced to stay inside and eat the old hmm. fatty pneumonia days. Do you think that was it when fatty pneumonia? Yeah, yeah it no, could be. No. I mean, I didn't go outside much as a kid. Barely at all. And it was a lot of staying in and watching the same reruns that I watch now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. And basically having TV dinners. Not a lot has changed. And even they were reruns at the time. <laughs> they were didn't after school. We didn't watch them fresh. Play? No. No, or play with the other kids. Oh, I remember when I was a kid, we had the secret diamond club. It was a secret. We looked for diamonds, and it was a club. Well, we all just couldn't grow up. five other neighborhood kids. <laughs> she grew up in Johannesburg. <laughs> <laughs> Babel. Yeah. Her home was Babel. All right, Fuzzy, up you go. And out that door, and even though go, just go and sit in that, uh, on that couch right there. Well, when can I come back? Well, after I give you the signal. Go out there and just relax. Off you go. I, I hate doing this. I know you do, but it's going, it's working. <laughs> Palms are think, dripping. I thought that was coming. The I thought that was coming all over you. All right, go <laughs> over there and sit. <laughs> yeah. No microphone for him. No mic at all. He's off the air completely. Yeah. The whole point isn't so he loses control Aww. and um, go board up the stand in front of the door so he can't get back in. Fez, can you hear me? Can you just give me a wave? I need you in here, Fez. Come in. Come in. You're needed. Oh, God. He can't get through. No, Fezzy, you. you're needed here. I'm keeping him. You're needed. I got him. On the air. The I show's going on. 
Okay, just wait. give him too much. The show's going on without you, Fez. Just give him enough to yell through. Let me in that door. <laughs> the show's happening without you. Fez, off the door. Let me in. Fez, I got your third grade teacher on the line and your brother. This is King and Courtney. <laughs> this is the strongest he's ever been. All right, watch. I don't want I don't want to push in his heart. I worry about his heart. You're like a bull. (laughs) You're like a bull in a china shop. Why is the china shop? Wow. All right, Fezzy. How how was that? Was that good? It was awful. Mm. (laughs) When I saw you wave me back in... Well, you weren't here. You weren't in the seat you were supposed to be in. I think I'm bleeding. Are you really? No, I don't know something. Yeah. All right, I've got to send an email to Elo and Wiki Aww. to let them know that you were not at your station today. Do not <laughs> send that to the XM executives. <laughs> and that should be put on your permanent record to come up at further reviews. Negligence. Negligence is what it is. Do not hit send. <laughs> Everything is supposed to... No. Be, everything and everybody has a place. Yes. And you weren't in yours today. Well, not through my fault. I will say, he was quite strong. That was yeah. that psychotic, I need to be in control. But I don't strength. need you making him work his heart like that when he's the guy hasn't moved in two years. <laughs> and then suddenly now, the worst thing, you, it's like a guy shoveling snow. You ever hear that? <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. The worst thing for your heart that you could do. Is that upper body exertion? Those guys drop dead. You must get like twenty, fifty of them a year, oh, every winter across the yeah. country. And now they're saying, look, if your husband, uh, if it snows, uh, ladies, you shovel because <laughs> your husband's going to drop dead out there. That's why my mom bought my dad a snowblower. He still has to go out there, but no more shoveling. Uh, Joe, Joe, you're on running Fez. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Uh. I'm not sure what the guy's name is. Dave could probably figure it out from board gossip. There's a guy on Pal Talk that's openly gay and seems to have a thing for Fez. He's on there every now and then. Maybe if uh, Dave can have one of his. Do you know him, Dave? I don't know him, but I'll find out. Woo, Fez. That's all I have. You don't have to find out, Dave. Openly gay whackback. And then somebody told me there's some uh, ex military girl. And to you, Dave. Uh, I've seen a little thread like that. You think they're just teasing the retard? It seems to be a little uh, set up, perhaps. Tanker Girl is this broad's name. You're not falling for it? uh, It doesn't seem, I don't know, it seems a little fake right now. It's smart for you not to believe. Yeah. It's smart for you to think this is better than it could be. Now, it doesn't mean I haven't gone to her MySpace page, like, every every 30 minutes on the hour and checked her out. Hey, uh, we'll take a little break here.